In this video, we're going to show you how to share content in Cisco WebEx meetings. All right, I am going to show you how to share inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to share inside of the Cisco WebEx meeting as well. Now, with that said, there are a couple caveats that may prevent you from being able to share. And that is one, there may be an organizational setting in effect that prevents the sharing inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. And two, there may be a requirement for you to ask permission to the meeting host before you're able to share inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. However, if the default settings are in effect and you watch this video, you'll have no trouble sharing inside of your Cisco WebEx meeting. So let's get right into it. All right, there are two places to start sharing with inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. The first is found in the meeting control doc at the bottom of the screen. This is comprised of the most commonly used options or functions inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting, and it comes and goes with the movement of the mouse. So if I do not move my mouse, it will fade away. Moving of the mouse will bring it back. Within this row is an option to share content. Now, when sharing inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting, share content is the most commonly used form. And that comprises of any screens you may have that you wish to share inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. Any recent applications that you've used on your computer, you can share those. And then at the bottom, you have the option to share a single file, perhaps a PDF or a Word document you wish to collaborate with your team over. Uh, any other applications. So some application that is not recent that you wish to share, you can select it here. And then you can actually share a whiteboard, which is a virtual whiteboard that you can collaborate with your team or participants of the meeting with. And then it will allow you to actually save the final production of that whiteboard. Couple points of note, um, the screen options. This is particularly helpful if you have two screens. You can share just one and then leave your meeting window and controls on the other. So screen one can be your WebEx meeting that you're in. You can see your participants. And screen two, you can share and use that as a drag and drop screen for any material that you may want to share. This is helpful if you want to predetermine or pre-select any applications on screen one. And then as you need to present them, you can just drag them to screen two. Um, additionally, there is a point to note with the whiteboard. When you select the whiteboard, it is only an option to share if your optimization selection is for text and images. Now this drop down is very important. This allows you to choose between optimize for text and images or optimize for motion and video. So anytime you're sharing content like a PowerPoint, a YouTube video, or a Windows video, whatever the content may be, if it includes motion and video, or you wish to share your computer sound with that content, you must choose optimize for motion and video. That just allocates additional bandwidth to that sharing and allows you to select share your computer audio. This is particularly helpful if you are recording the meeting so that it will capture all forms of audio. Uh, if motion and video, optimized for motion and video is selected, the ability to share a whiteboard is not available. So you must make sure prior to sharing a whiteboard, it is on optimized for text and images, which gives you the option to share the whiteboard. Now, uh, share screen is the most common, so we'll quickly review that. To share it, I would simply click the blue share button that highlights, and it will immediately go to my desktop screen, which you are seeing a portion of. Um, and then everything within that screen is being shared. So anything that I populate on the screen will be visible to the meeting. However, if I wish to stop sharing or I want controls within the meeting while I'm sharing, you'll notice at the top of my screen it says you are sharing your screen in an orange block. Hovering over that will bring back the meeting control options. So I can mute, unmute myself. I can start or stop my video. I can start or stop the recording. 
I can view the participants. I can view the chat. I can annotate. Annotate permits me to actually draw and annotate over my source of sharing. So in this case, my desktop. Um, and then I can assign functionality or roles for the meeting. So I can make someone else a presenter or a host. And to the left, we have stop sharing, which will stop the sharing and bring me back to my meeting window. One cool function is actually pause. So let's say I'm viewing a document on the screen and I want to go find another document that I forgot to get ready. I can pause the screen share or any sharing. I can pause it and the participants will only see the screen or whatever I last shared upon pressing pause. So if I was sharing this wallpaper and I pressed pause and then I changed my wallpaper, the participants wouldn't see me change that until I resumed the meeting. So I can get a document ready, get it up on the screen, then I can hit resume and it will actually bring them back. So they'll be paused momentarily at the screen that you pause the meeting at. That can be super helpful. Now, if I wanted to switch what I was sharing, there is no need to stop sharing first. I can simply click share, share content, and then go back and change. This is actually very helpful if I was sharing content and I wanted to go to a you know, website and watch a video or I wanted to pull up a video and share it and I forgot to optimize for emotion and video, I could at this point click here and change it while I'm sharing live in the meeting. They won't see the participants, any of these options or this doc that's all private. All they see is whatever you've selected. And then of course, if I want to stop sharing, I could simply hit stop sharing it will bring back the meeting window. Under share content, that, that's pretty much it. It is extremely helpful, the most commonly used and best way to do that, um, to do any form of sharing with inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there is a second place in which you can enable sharing. And this is found in the meeting control toolbar. So at the top, at the menu toolbar, there's an option to share. Selecting that will bring back the share content. Now again, because this is the most commonly form, it gets its own button in the meeting control doc. However, it can also be found here. The next one is share web browser. Selecting that will actually launch a web browser and allow you to go to a website of choice and share that inside of the meeting. I do recommend, however, sharing content, sharing your screen, and then opening up a web browser versus sharing a web browser. Because when you do this, it is backed by the meeting, and that can require a heavy usage on your computer's processing. So again, it's always best to share the screen, then open up a dedicated browser. Um, share multimedia will give you the option to select a link and watch a video or any type of multimedia that has a URL. So in this case, if you had a direct YouTube video that you wanted to go and show as part of your, your demonstration or presentation, you could simply put the link in here and hit OK. Now again, this is where I would recommend sharing your desktop again and opening up YouTube directly. Um, because it doesn't open a full panel, and again, it does put a heavy load on your computer's processing, trying to share that through a Cisco WebEx meeting. It's always better and easier for your computer to just share the screen and then open up a dedicated browser. But it does give you the option for like a quick video. It will function just fine. Um, and then I can just close my multimedia, go back to share. The last option... There is one grayed out shared remote computer. You do have to have a remote computer configured and connected to have that option, but you could do so. That's more for the IT professionals. Um, but my personal, as a collaboration engineer, personal favorite is the share my meeting window. So this would be if you had any coworkers, peers, employees, friends, family members that you wanted to demonstrate the use or functionality of Cisco WebEx meeting, share my meeting window is the only way to share everything with inside Cisco WebEx meeting, including this menu bar, all of the share options, the share doc, 
the meeting control functionality that is all hidden when sharing anything else inside of a Cisco WebEx meeting. However, when you hit share my window, it shares everything inside of your meeting window. Uh, all participants can see this doc. They can see my meeting control doc buttons at the bottom and they can see my full menu bar. And again, this is really helpful when you're teaching new users of WebEx how to control or do certain functions or you're giving general overviews. I will use this quite frequently to teach onboarding users WebEx. <laughs> it covers everything, including the functionality we're reviewing today, sharing, recording, some of those things that you need to see this doc. Um, that is where that comes into play. And when it does, it is clutch. In terms of sharing content, that is pretty much all you need to know. You simply join, select the share content button that we reviewed, select what you want to share. Don't forget when you're done sharing to hit stop sharing. You can go back to your meeting. If you found this video helpful and you enjoyed the content, please give a thumbs up. Any suggestions for future videos, please leave in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoy this type of content regarding technology and how to type videos, please consider subscribing and we will see you in the next one.